Hello guys, welcome back to some Modern Man here today, and today we are doing a deck tech. A lot of people have been asking for me to do deck techs on the channel, and I decided why not? I thought of a way to do it, I thought of a way to make my life easier while doing it, and I'm going to do it via PowerPoint. If you guys have any other suggestions how to do it, let me know down below. This is the easiest way I could think of how to do it, and the nicest way. Um, but also, smash that thumbs up button, share this video, and everything like that if you guys want to see more content like this daily. Unfortunately for Hearthstone, that's why I had to stop. Not very many people were viewing it. I think on the, the most viewed Hearthstone video I had, I had like 30 views, I think. 30, 40 views, and that just wasn't enough for as much effort I was putting into it. But anyways, let's go ahead and get into the deck tech. We are playing Blue-White Control in Modern. Um, this is the oh, this is the entire deck uh, right there, just all in one place for you guys. If you don't want to watch the whole video, I understand. And we have the online price and the paper price below. Uh, all the all the prices uh, shown besides the card beside the cards are online prices. I do not play physical Magic anymore, unfortunately, but. I do play Magic Online. If you guys want to play with me, test with me, anything like that, go ahead and let me know that as well. And let's go ahead and jump right in after you guys see the entire deck list. For creatures, we have three Snapcaster Mage. Basically, in my opinion, any blue control deck should be playing Snapcaster Mage. Um, yes, it is one of my favorite cards, so I guess I have a soft spot for it. But it's also pretty much one of the best value creatures ever printed. Uh, two mana give any... Two mana body, 2-1 with flash and it gives any other card any other instant or sorcery card in your uh, graveyard flashback for its mana cost that seems uh, pretty good in my opinion and then we come to restoration angel also has a soft spot uh, inside of me uh, I played it when it was standard with thrag tusk and things like that so I, I figured I would uh, play him in here so restoration angel is very good with snapcaster you get a rebuy its ability and it uh, also has flash which is a good another reason why it's in the deck. I couldn't really play more than two, being that we we're only playing nine creatures. But, I mean, maybe if you're playing like Vendillion Clicks in the deck, I could see playing more, but not in this version, my version. But we are playing... Uh, we also have Wall of Omens in the deck, which is also good with Restoration Angel. Two mana, zero four, enters the battlefield, draw a card. Uh, it's just a two mana blocker, which is really good against the ag the zoo decks, any of the aggro decks. Really, it just gets in the way, and you get a draw a card out of it. So basically, if they have to use a removal spell to get rid of your wall of omens, it's a one for zero, since your wall of omens replaced itself. And our next uh, section we have are planeswalkers. Some alternative win conditions. We have Jace Architect the Thought. I'm really just a big fan of this Jace. It's uh, some good card value. C card, yeah, card value. I don't know what I was thinking. Uh, you minus two, you draw at least one card. That's pretty good. And against the aggro deck, you have your plus one, which is also very good. And there's this cool thing with its ultimate. Uh, for each player, search that player's library for a non-land card and exile it. Then that player shuffles his or her library. You may uh, exile. So you get basically what it is is you get to choose a card from your opponent's deck and your deck. Exile them both. You can cast them for free. So it's pretty good against the Nahiri decks if you can get it the ultimate because you can take their Emrakul out of their deck, cast their own Emrakul against them. I just think that's funny. That'd be cool if I got to see somebody do that. And then on to the next Planeswalker, we have Gideon Jura. Five mana, six loyalty Planeswalker. During your, your opponent's next turn, it's plus two is during your during target opponent's next turn. Creatures that player controls attacks Gideon, so it's kind of like a mini fog. If they don't have many dudes in, their, or in play, it's a continuous quote-unquote fog. Minus two is destroy target tapped creature. So after you make your opponent attack your Gideon, um, you can destroy one of their creatures with Gideon's minus two ability. And then for its zero cost, it can become a 6-6 six, six human soldier that's still a planeswalker. Prevent all damage that would be dealt to him. So in a way, it's its own finisher as well. It becomes a 6-6 six, six body. And you can just start attacking when it once you clear the board up. And then for the last one of Planeswalker in the deck, it's Elspeth Sun's Champion. Plus one, put three one one white soldier tokens on the battlefield. Six mana for three one one tokens it seems pretty good to me. I mean, and it's on a planeswalker, so they have to kill the planeswalker and the tokens. Minus three, destroy all creatures power four or greater. That's pretty relevant in modern. You have Tarmogoyf, Tassigur, Death Shadow, Grim Flayer, if that sees more play in modern, and several others. Probably some more I can't think of. And then it's minus seven's basically a finisher. It gives all of your creatures plus two, plus two, and flying. 
Now, granted, it's probably not the best. The ultimate in this deck's not the best, but if you've got enough tokens in play with its plus ability, it'd be really good. Uh, it makes its finisher itself. And then we have the removal suite. This is, uh, this is where you can change the numbers up. This is what I like. I don't like playing too many rats in my deck. But we have four pa Path to Exile. Basically the best white removal, white spot removal in the format. So you're pretty much auto-playing four of them in any control deck that plays white. And then you have two Supreme Verdict. Some decks play three. Some even play four. But I think that's a little too many. I like two. Most of the time I don't like getting Wrath Flooded. That's one of my biggest... I don't know. I just, I just don't like it. And then we have two Detention Sphere. So Detention Sphere is good against... A slew of different decks, uh, tokens, any dude deck, any dude, any deck, any dude deck, any deck that plays creatures or planeswalkers that hits planeswalkers, creatures, your opponent's enchantments, anything like that. And then if they overextend into it, not knowing that you're playing detention sphere, you can punish them for it. Just another little, another little reason why detention sphere is really good. And then for our draw spells in the deck, we have four serum visions. I originally wasn't playing any at all, but I felt like that wasn't great. Um, I felt like I had, originally I had Sphinx's Revelation in the list, but I think Serum Visions is a little more important, especially in the current format, because I really need to like find my removal spells, find my interaction, and waiting until like super late game to cast like a Sphinx's Rev and just maybe win the game isn't good, in my opinion. Then we have one Think Twice. Uh, I couldn't cut the Think Twice. Think Twice is one of my favorite cards ever printed, played with it when it was standard. And it's just a really good card, in my opinion. And then we have three Spreading Seas. Um, maybe I should be playing four over the other Think Twice, but I like the Think Twice, as I just said. It's spreading Seas is good against like the Tron decks, um, any decks that's got a good greedy land base, and it replaces itself. So, I mean, if you can catch your opponent lacking on mana or getting greedy with their mana, and then you get a replace of Spreading Seas by drawing a card when you play it, that's another reason why they played. It's basically like playing a 57 card, but those three cards also affect your opponent. For counter spells, we don't really have many. I don't think counter spells are um, particularly well placed in the current format. We have one spell snare just because spell snare is a really good card. Three mana leaks. Um, some people well, will play remands over mana leak, but in a control deck, I really think you need mana leak. You need a, a for sure way of being able to counter or deal with their cards. And then, for the haymaker of all counter spells, Cryptic Command. Cryptic Command is just the catch-all. I'm a good at all circumstances card. I'm good against aggro, tap your dudes, draw a card. Good against planeswalker, counter your planeswalker, draw a card. Return a permanent, draw a card. That just sounds all that just sounds fantastic. The only bad thing about it is it's three blue, but we're only a two-color deck, so that's fine. Now for the land base, the land base is a little tricky. Um, I didn't put basics on here just because you uh, wanted to preface it with this. I mean, land base, in my opinion, is not as important as people like to make it out to be, especially with two-color decks. Uh, sure, there are some mainstays for the deck that you have to play, most likely. But you can, like, work around it. You could still have a blue-white control deck without flooded strands and things like that's what I'm getting at. But we have four Celestial Colonnade. I think this one is a super important one to have in the deck. I don't know how well the deck would be without Celestial Colonnade, being that it's one of its main finishers. Uh, pay three colors, a white and a blue, until in a turn, Celestial Colony becomes a 4-4 white blue elemental creature with flying. So you basically can just poke them with it and just keep counter spells up. So you attack for four. It has vigilance, so you get to keep counter spells. Flooded Strand fixes your mana. Ghost Quarter um, is good against like the Valakutes. Any deck that's getting greedy with their land base once again. I mean, you can even catch the the Taxes deck that have a Leon and Harbiter. Play a Ghost Quarter and Ghost Quarter your opponent. And then you have two Glacial Fortress. Because you're a two-color deck, you really don't need to be greedy with your mana base. So you don't need to be like playing like four shock lands, which you'll see next. So we're only playing two Hollowed Fountain because I have there are plenty of dual lands. So I don't really need to be playing four shock lands, especially in a, an aggressive format the way it is right now. And then two Temple of Enlightenments as well. A little deck manipulation never hurts. And since your deck's a little slower, you can uh, take the time a little bit to be able to play the temples in your deck and. It's just a deck manipulation's nice is what I'm getting at. And for the sideboard, I want to preface this as well with saying that you don't have to play the exact sideboard that I'm playing. This is just the sideboard that I found that I would like the most. 
Um, sideboards are always changing, something to keep in mind. Uh, your sideboard depends on where you play at. This is my Magic Online sideboard. So we have one Condemn. Uh, it's just a good card. It's a good spot removal spell. It's good against like the Dredge decks. You can put it on the bottom of their library. Relic of Progenitus, good against the Dredge decks. Good against any deck that plays Snapcaster or Tarmogoyf. Blessed Alliance, good against Death Shadow decks. Um, you can make them gain four life and make them sack a dude. Um, it's also good against Infect and, any, and Boggles. Negates, just good against any, any deck that plays a bunch of non-creature spells. I don't know of many decks that I don't want Negate against. Probably like Zoo, but any other deck I probably wouldn't mind having a Negate. Uh, one Rest in Peace hits the Tarmogoyf. Hits Tarmogoyf decks, hits Dredge decks. That's probably the only decks I'm bringing like dedicated um, Graveyard Hate in against because at least Relic cycles and draws you an extra card. Maybe those Delirium decks that are popping up as well. Stony Silence is good against Affinity and maybe even Ad Nauseam because you stop their Mana Rocks. Another defense, Detention Sphere, just another catch-all removal spell that um, is good against a variety of decks that have threats you can't really answer in your main deck. Kitchen Finks is good against any burn deck, any deck that's trying to be aggressive. It's a good blocker. It gains you life. It's actually two blockers, and it gains you four life. That's pretty good. And then for the last of the sideboard, we have two Spell Quellers. This card just seems really good against the mid-range decks, especially since we're playing Restoration Angel. You can play Spell Queller a spell, and then if they play a more important spell later in the game, you can Restoration Angel your Spell Queller and Spell Queller the spell that, they that you rather hit. So there's that, and I just like Spellqueller as a card. I think this card's fantastic. And then we have one more Supreme Verdict on the sideboard for the aggressive decks. And uh, that's really about it. If you guys have any suggestions for deck techs that you want to see, um, I don't know if I'll do Commander decks. That seems like a lot of cards to cover. But I will do uh, more modern decks, standard decks. Any format you want to see, I will do it. Uh, comment down below if you guys like this style of deck tech with any, or with anything I should change, anything like that. And I hope you guys have a good night, and I hope to see your beautiful faces tomorrow. See you guys later. Bye-bye.